RE timing. What is the ideal max boost for a BH stage two plus tune? And I have an aggressive pulley ratio and I'm worried max boost plus max timing equals kaboom. Um, is that a kaboom or is it just fire? Fire. Well, I don't know. Um, so if it's fire, fire, is it the fire means it's supposed to light off your- I think your it's supposed to be bad. We, we, we've talked about this a lot. Um, I am not a fan of running, I, I mean, aggressive pulley ratios. Um, they generally just introduce a lot more heat than they do uh, motive force. So um, I, we, we're always going to say run the smallest pulley you can for what you're trying to achieve. Um, running big pulley or big lower pulleys and little upper pulleys um, is tough to control. Uh, it's tough to keep the temperatures where they're, you know, where things are going to be happy. Um, the, you know, where the limit of what the fuel system can provide. There's a lot of things that you start running into the limits of um, as you go with, with bigger and bigger pulley ratios. Um, and the downside starts stacking up pretty quick for um, the heat generated, the, you know, the, the, efficient, the efficiency of the supercharger is just nose diving. So, um, you know, I don't like going any bigger than the 190 on the lower and then our upper pulley. Um, I know there's guys out there that run a lot higher than that. Um, but it's it's usually tough to to get those setups running, you know, strong all the time and reliably and keep them cool and keep things you know optimal. So yeah, that's that's kind of why we only have the one ninety mil and then the one seventy nine is what we generally recommend for the guys that are up, uh, you know, tracking the cars all the time and really um, need to keep those air temps mm -hmm. managed correctly. Um, you know, pull pull after pull after pull. Yeah, I mean, you have to keep in mind um, boost or forcing a certain pressure of air inside a motor is not what creates horsepower and torque. Yeah, and I actually meant to follow up also that that is very dependent on what fuel you're running. Uh, yeah, E40 will do a lot better on mm -hmm. yeah, you know, a higher a higher pulley ratio than say 91 or 93 or even 100. Um, so if you're running 91, 93, I would always recommend like a 179 mil lower and, and you know, enjoy it. You're gonna have mm -hmm. a nice, you know, Pretty optimized setup um, for the given fuel. If you're able to go to an E40, you know, 190 mil um, lowers with our upper pulley. Mm -hmm. uh, works really well. Well, once you really start understanding what is the mechanism inside the motor that forces the piston down with enough force to generate peak horsepower and torque, you can quickly see that that, that combination of factors, that boost is only just one of them. Yeah. You know, and um, the amount of air which is the boost the amount of fuel which is fuel ratio and then frankly the most important thing is when does that wave of pressure begin and at what point does that wave of pressure act on the piston and that is very much related to timing uh, engine timing yeah so you can you could force a 100 psi of of pressure into a combustion chamber and a motor that could withstand it but if that explosion happens at the wrong time then not only is it going to not make horsepower it's going to shove the, the rod and piston back down the engine's throat you know like in a really bad usually way. it doesn't go down either it goes it just goes into so, pieces <laughs> yeah but um and we, we have a whole piece on this i mean, maybe you'll reference that or if you can find it sean but you know the key is the explosion and the pressure wave has to happen when the piston's heading back down um, but it has to start when the piston's on the way up. Yeah, that flame front isn't instant. It takes no. it takes a, it takes time. We're talking you know we're talking milliseconds here. It is instant. It's, it's... <laughs> but in in that in that how that works in, within that instant, there's many milliseconds right. and microseconds where when things happen. So people get hyper focused on boost because there's a gauge on the dash and you know sure up to a certain point the more boost you make the more power you make. But once you run out of timing. Uh, then more boost is worse. Um, and so, you know, yeah. if you had unlimited octane fuel and, and you could light off, you know, you could, you, could, you could give as much timing as you wanted to, to whatever amount of boost that you could run, then sure. But that's not, that's not real life. Yep. Yep. You know, we, we live in a world where compromises are what control us. So yeah, yeah we've got, we've got to pick our battles and, and, you know, we will, uh, generally always try and steer you to a more, what we would consider a reasonable pulley ratio and you will in, generally enjoy things uh, a, yeah, lot, I mean, a lot longer for, you know, with a lot more consistent uh, power output. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's just, just like anything else. I mean, it's just like your body, your body's powered by, you know, 
glucose. And uh, if you don't have enough, you die. If you have just the right amount, you have optimal energy and health. And then if you get too much, you get diabetes. And then <laughs> literally, like, you start dying. Parts of your body die. If, if you get too much glucose in your cells, then they stop working. So this is very similar to boost. You, you need the right amount. But yeah. more it doesn't always equal better. People just, I think there's still there's still a hard time. Yeah, I mean, if, if there were no compromises, why wouldn't we have you know two hundred and whatever millimeter pulleys all the time? You know, yeah, running on everything, and we we we'd be recommending those. But there's, yeah. Well, then there's this whole other factor of efficiency for the, the pressure creating device. So right, our, yeah, in that's, this that's case, kind of it's, a, it's a supercharger, and it, it it can it produce more boost? Yes. But the more at some point it just starts producing heat, yep. and so now you have to do something with all that heat. There's a, there's a offset at a certain point. So there's an optimal efficiency for the for the supercharger where it creates the most boost with the least amount of heat. That's where you kind of want to be. But as soon as you start going away from that, as soon as you go above that, then now you're dealing with all this heat, and heat is working against your ability to make more power. So yeah, somebody just chimed in. We need a turbo kit. We've talked about this too. The the um, yeah. putting, putting a turbo kit on the three liter is, you know, to do it in engineered like, make it faster product. Yeah, in an engineered product that you could buy and install with all the documentation that's required, with all the software support, with all of the, uh, you know, all all of the details you would expect from a complete kit is probably going to cost more than the cars do at this point. Yeah. 